And now that we've uh, gone ahead and updated that, let's say, you know what, now that I see that actually punched through my model, uh, I wish I would have made some better decisions. Well, no problem. All you got to do is you can go back into your history, right click that and say edit sketch, or you can simply go over here, you can, here's the sketch we want to edit, so I turn it on just to make sure. I can right click this sketch and go edit sketch, and that'll actually, um, you'll notice that it, we lost that profile we cut through. When you go to edit sketch, the last thing you use that sketch for is the point in history where you'll see it. Um, if that doesn't make any sense, basically what I'm trying to say is, well, you'll probably see it um, as we move forward and start doing more complex objects, but you'll notice that even though we had punched this through, when we been, went back and edited this sketch because we created the sketch before we pulled this profile through, we're back at that state. So if you ever want to base your sketch off something that you've created after that sketch, I would go ahead and just create a new sketch so you can actually see everything. Uh, but at this point, um, I already know what I want to go in and change. So basically, let's see, what do I want to do? Uh, if I uh, right click in here and go to move, because I'm in sketch mode, I can actually move uh, individual pieces of my sketch. So I can actually pull this forward or back. And uh, it looks like our constraints are letting us do that. If you're ever in here and you're pulling, you want to move something and it's not letting you, it's probably because these little things here, these little constraints, which um, if I move this thing, here's your constraints here. They're not letting you. Um, and constraints are a good thing, but if they're getting in your way, you can just click them and delete them. Uh, but we want to make this, you know, let's make this a little bit smaller. So we'll pull this back, hit OK. And another thing we can do, no, oh, that's enough. I think this will demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. So we've updated our sketch. If I hit stop sketch, you're going to see it went ahead and push pulled us through because we didn't delete that push pull. We just updated the sketch, it updated the sketch for us. When we stopped sketch, it went ahead and updated everything past that point in history. And you can go way back in your history. You can go back to your original sketch here. And uh, you know, if you make a change to this, it'll actually update to this shape as well. So depending on how far back in history you go or which sketch you choose to uh, update, it'll update all the way through uh, all your operations here. So uh, we've updated that. Let's keep uh, sketching here. So let's hop back into sketches because there's a lot more. There's a lot more things you can do with sketches. I can't even begin to explain. And again, I'm, this is like a quick start, guys. I'm not going to go over everything, but just some things that I think are important. Uh, so you know what? Instead of adding another sketch, I'm just going to right-click this one and do Edit Sketch because why not? Um, and we'll just use this to create a pattern on this thing. So there's a couple different ways you can do patterns. You can do patterns and sketches. So basically, like if we draw a square here and then pattern it down and then go out of sketch mode and extrude those down. You can cut holes that way. Or what you can do is make one of those patterns, extrude a form, or a body, I'm sorry, and then you can pattern that body down instead of doing what we're gonna be doing now, which is sketching a pattern. You can actually go down here and do a pattern on along a path or a rectangular pattern or a circular pattern. And we'll get into those when we get into the body stuff. But for now, we're gonna do it for a sketch. So just to do that, let's go into sketch rectangle and you'll see two point rectangle the shortcut is R so I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna click here and here and there's a rectangle and you're gonna see because we made a rectangle we've got these these constraints here uh, which is fine and if you click O you can uh, go ahead and offset this entire thing if you'd like um, but we don't want to do that so I'm gonna cancel uh, one thing we can do though is under sketch we can do fillet and with fillet selected just like when we were filleting the body um, where, where the two pieces came together. I can do that on a sketch as well. So if I click this point here, it'll say how many, you can click and drag, or you can type in a number, and I think two was fine. So I'll just click two and hit enter. Uh, I can right click, do repeat fillet, and then I can just go around my sketch and just tap, and it'll just update with two. And on this last one, I'm gonna hit enter. And you're gonna see it's also putting in more constraints. So you've got this tangent constraint here. Uh, looks like a center point for this fillet. So a lot of cool things you can grab as far as points go and constraints that you can use if you actually update these. So you're gonna see it actually gave you, this is something I should have brought up earlier. So under sketch, you've got dimensions. So if you go in here and you double click a dimension, you can actually change that on the fly. So if you hit three and enter, that'll update that to a fillet of three. And because this fillet was actually equal to these other ones, because we you know, just went through and clicked those fillets, all of these are gonna update because that constraint is there. Uh, this one, because we made it separately, isn't. Uh, but I think what I can do is if I go, if I click this fillet here and then do an equal to that one, it'll go ahead and put an equal constraint in there. So now what I can do is update this one with three and uh, it's gonna give me an error. So <laughs> it looks like it's got probably too many dimensions or too many constraints. So what I can do is let's try this. Let's delete that dimension here and we'll plug this one in. There we go. So this had a dimension on it and that was stopping it 
from give, getting a new dimension. Um, now that I've chained that to three and these I've made a constraint for these to be equal, now they're all uh, three. But I'm going to go ahead and change it back to two. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about filleting and constraints and stuff for sketches. Now I want to make a pattern of this, let's say, all the way down this side. So one thing I can do is go to sketch and we'll go rectangular and it's going to ask for our objects. I'm going to go through and click all these. Okay, and uh, direction. I don't think I need a direction for my um, for as a selection, so I can actually just click and drag. And by default, the number of patterns is going to be three. So I can click and drag and tell it, okay, I want it to go this direction, and I want it to kind of stop here. But instead of three, I want to do a quantity of like ten. Okay, there's ten of them. Or if I don't want to do ten, you know, it's like you know what, I want five. Uh, I want five, but you know what? I don't want this one. So you can uncheck that box there, and that'll get rid of that sketch. So a lot of uh, versatility here within the sketching options. And of course, you've got uh, direction types, quantity, distance, all this stuff you can kind of play with. But we'll go ahead and hit OK. And let's say, you know what? I love this pattern here. I wish it was on the other side. Well, let's go ahead and mirror them over, just like we did this one. And I don't have to make a center line for this object, because I already have one. I have that uh, one we made on the previous sketch. So what I'm going to do is go to Sketch. Mirror. I'm going to mirror uh, all these objects. I'm going to see if I can click drag. So I have to sit here and select all day. There we go. Select all those. There's 80 selected. I'm going to do the mirror line here. There we go. Hit OK. And now we've mirrored those pattern sketches. I'm going to stop sketch. And it's going to update to the version where uh, this has been push pulled through. And we've updated the sketch, so now we have these profiles we can select. And if you're ever rotating around and your camera's being a little bit weird, go up here to your cube and just click that house and that'll kind of center you back out. And then, uh, so let's select those profiles and pull them through. So I'm going to select all these. Perfect. And I'm going to, I can just right click and do push pull. I'm going to pull them all through. And at the bottom here I'm going to go distance to, select that bottom plane. And it, I wanted to cut through, that's fine, so I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. And I'm going to turn off that sketch. And now we've got this cool piece right here. So now if I want to uh, fill it this whole top, all I have to do is hit F. And we can go around and click all of these at once. Or I can do a rule fill it along this entire sh uh, profile shape here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to hit F to fill it. I'm going to click these lines here. And let's soften these transitions out. So I'm going to kind of soften that transition. Hit OK. And now if I hit F, you're going to see it's going to go all the way around the object because I've filleted this object. So because I have chain tangent chain on, it's going to want to select all the way around the object. Same for the bottom. And I can go ahead and give it however many millimeters. Let's say 0.5. I can fill these edges. Uh, that's not enough. Let's do two. There we go. And if I want to do the exact same thing for all of these profiles, all I have to do is hit F. And let's do a... Um, Let's see if we can do a chamfer for these. So I'm going to select all these profiles here. And let's go to... Oh, I already did a fillet, so that's fine. 0.25. Cool. And now, if I, of course, I want to change that, I can right-click this feature here, go to Edit Feature. And it's like, you know what? I didn't want to do 0.25. I wanted to do 1. There we go. And while we're even thinking about it. Uh, if you want to roll back to this sketch, you know, it's like, you know what, I actually want these moved in a little bit. No problem, go back to your sketch, go to edit sketch, and again, it's going to go back in history, so you haven't poked those holes yet, but you can go in here and move these things around. However, because there's constraints, let's see if it even lets us. So I'm going to right click, do move, I'm going to grab all these here, and if I back out and try and move this thing around, it's not letting me because, well, it's letting me, but it's also wanting to move the whole pattern around. You know what? I don't want to do that. The pattern worked really well except for just these two, so I'm going to go ahead and go through here and break all these constraints. I'm just going to hit delete. And actually, I think these are actually mirrored, um, mirrored constraints, or symmetry constraints, sorry. Uh, but it doesn't matter. If I just want to move um, these two, and it looks like it deleted them for both, I can go ahead and just, let's go ahead and grab them all. I'm going to click and drag over these two. And now that I've deleted the constraints, I should be able to right click and go into move and go ahead and move these freely. Well, maybe not. Let's go ahead and break this pattern here. 
All right, so now if I select these ones here, There, now I can move those freely. Now, is that clean to do? Are constraints nice? Absolutely, they're really nice to use. Um, but in a in a pinch, I don't mind deleting constraints and kind of moving these things around how I want to. Um, like I said, is it clean? Uh, would a real CAD modeler want to do it that way? It's probably not, but just for my purposes, it's fine. I'm going to click OK, stop sketch, and you're going to see everything's been updated. My sketch has been moved around, and uh, everything's been punched through. And it's already ran through the operation. Let's go ahead and recenter myself here. It's already ran through the fillet operation, so I don't lose anything by going back through history and editing.